Good evening, LCM. Yeah. Tonight is Wednesday, March 18, 2020. And the title of tonight's message is Drifting in the Current. Drifting in the Current. What incredible time that we are living in right now. It's an unprecedented time of events that are happening worldwide. It's not just here in Texas, it's not just here in America. It is happening around the globe. You know, your pastors are even more confident about the potential of God moving in our lives and in our church now than ever before. Amen. We are built for this time. Yeah, we are. Come on, it's for this very moment that we were born and put on earth in even the series that God has been leading us in. I mean, when you look at our current series, Divine Dimensions, that before any of this was a, a precedent or a, a pandemic of fear in our society, God was already giving us what we need to see the reality of heaven on earth. To be able to see how the blood is applied to our our ears, our thumbs, and our toes that give us the ears to hear God's voice, the hands to do His actions, and the feet to walk out His paths. It's then a predictable pattern that His oil is put right on top of it. That what you have as a predictable pattern is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to then carry out the identity that He's given each and every one of you. Amen. Who's been walking in their identity for the past week or so? Having a revelation that you are drenched in your identity, that identity that has been born from heaven that gives you confidence to carry out his commands. Come on, church. Say, I need my identity. I need my identity. Well, well, well I can't go into the, the job place. What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to walk in your identity. You're supposed to be drenched in it. This yeah. is the Lord helping us, knowing ahead of time. Oh, my goodness. The God who can call the end from the beginning tells us ahead of time and starts preparing our hearts, start getting us ready so that we know exactly what we need. See, we've also been learning how to drift. Somebody say drift. Drift. We're learning how to drift in the Holy Spirit. We're learning how to cut away the anchors, those fears of failure, of self-sufficiency, yeah. of some compartmentalization that there's a different place and a different time and one place is more holy than another. The anchor of identity theft. See, I want to tell you right now, church, that your circumstances do not matter in the kingdom. They don't matter. But this looks difficult. Yeah, your circumstances don't matter because God is in control. He is the one who is going to have his way. It allows us to walk in authenticity. Yeah. It allows us to it walk does. as we really are. We yeah. can have the bonds broken off of us and us walk with our heads held high. Why? Amen. Because he is with us. I might be steering one way and feel like I'm going another, but I'm going to trust that that exhilarating feel is him moving me towards exactly where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Man, what a difference that we have here in this place, don't we? Yeah. My gosh, you can look at, look at the current climate around us. Yeah, it's nothing yeah. but fear, nothing but craziness. It changes every day. It changes every hour. You might think you know what's going on, and by the time you get home, something is completely different. Can I encourage you? Not to be little drones that sit there and look at your phone all day to figure out what's going on. Can I encourage you that that is not going to help? Has anybody ever been helped when you've been sick by looking at WebMD more and more? Anybody no. ever conquered your fear by looking at WebMD? No, what happens? You go bonkers. You're like, oh, it could be this. It could be this. It could be this. Why don't we just calm down? I have all those symptoms. I have all of them. All 80 of them. No. <laughs> See, there is a current situation, but tonight the title of the message is Drifting in the Current. Amen. Uh, would you put up the, the slide that we have there, Miss Natalie? Here we go. Look at the definition of current. I love this. This is type in the word current and hit enter, and this is what comes up. Belonging to the present time. Happening here. Somebody say here. Here. Somebody say now. Now. See, right now you should be drifting in what is current. What is current in your life is that God is speaking to you, that God is moving upon you, that you actually get a chance to show something about your faith in this yeah. time. Yeah. Man, we, we get a little bit of a chance to show that we actually love the Lord. We get a little bit of a chance to have, to have a little persecution going on. It is now and here a time for us to walk in this current, to drift in this current. Current, a noun. A body of water or air 
moving in a definite direction. Come on, somebody say definite direction. Definite direction. See, that there's the current, there's the here and now, but then there's the current of the Spirit. There's something that is moving in a definite direction that we have to get a part of, that we have to drift in, especially through a surrounding body of water or air in which there is less movement. Just a definition. How very interesting for us tonight. That we are trying to move forward, that we don't even feel slowed down in the least bit because we have fallen as a church into the drift of the current of God's Spirit. And He is moving us. He's moving us to not be afraid. He's moving us to advance in the kingdom. Now is the time for you to grow. Now is the time for you to advance. Now is the time for you to have things going on in your life that only the Holy Spirit can do. Did you hear the prophecy tonight in the middle of worship? Victory is at hand. Mark this day. Man, that sounds like God is not worried about the slow movers on the outside of us, but He is moving in a definitive, definitive direction for us tonight. He is moving us at a high velocity towards His exact will. Come on now, we're going to get to it. Let's all turn to Philippians chapter 1 tonight. Say there whenever you're there. Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. Now, I want you to know, brothers. What was that first word again? Now. Now. Does that sound like a current time? Right? So currently, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. You know, we're standing in the place of looking at current circumstances. You can miss the bigger picture most of the time. I know, I know that we do. You get inundated with the details. You begin to predict the future of how it's just going to get worse. And ultimately how this is going to get so much harder and God's not going to get the glory in it. But when you begin to adjust your current perspective, you then begin to have the same kind of perspective that Paul had. Because once again, our circumstances don't determine the current of our journey in divine dimensions. Let me say it one more time. Our current circumstances do not determine our journey into the divine dimensions. Let me explain a little bit further. When you begin to see that your current circumstances are not hindering and they are serving you, Next thing you know, your whole outlook and attitude, the availability for God's power to move through you is so much greater. What was Paul necessary? What was he exactly going through when it came to advancing the gospel? Well, he would go out and preach and he would be persecuted. False witnesses would be raised up speaking against him wrongly to imprison him. That would result in his beatings, his outcasts, and ultimately they're looking for his death. Everywhere he went, this followed him. And he is telling the church of Philippi, now, currently, I want you to know, because he already knows this, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Paul was drifting in the current circumstances because he could see the reality of what it actually was going to produce. You plant a seed. You expect a tree. You expect some kind of uh, botanical result to come out of the ground. If you hold a bucket of water above somebody's heads and turn, turn upside down, you expect gravity to take place. You expect that current circumstance to result in something. Well, we want to look at something that here that is used for the word advance in Philippians 1.12. In NASB, it's greater progress. Let's put up the next slide. Strong's number 4297, Procope, meaning to drive forward. A going forward used only figuratively of progress, advancement, furtherance, either for, uh, for good or evil. So if I read this verse again, then just use drive forward. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to drive forward the gospel. Doesn't that implicate more force? 
Doesn't that implicate a strong current of circumstance that Paul is having to drift in, relying upon the Holy Ghost to lead and direct him where he needs to go because it will result in the driving forward of the gospel? A salvation for the people, much like cutting away some anchors in a lifeboat and just drifting with the current circumstance that will result in advancing the gospel on Malta? What does this look like in your life? What anchors are still there that are preventing you from seeing the outcome of just drifting with the current circumstance? That anchor of self sufficiency that is resisting the advancing of the gospel because you cannot clearly see what the outcome of this current circumstance is going to do. So as we begin to cut those one by one, you know what that allows us to do? To then begin to drift with the current of God's spirit within that circumstance because it's going to advance and move something forward. Come on, church. Let's look at verse 13. As a result, somebody say result. As a result of what's going on here, it has become clear. Come on, don't you like it when things get clear? Yeah. Throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am a, in chains for Christ. Paul is sitting here in chains writing these letters. He's having to trust of the drift of getting in the current of where the Spirit is leading him. And he says, as a result, as a result of advancing, of forging ahead, of moving forward in what the Spirit is doing, it has become clear. There's always a result of you clearly drifting in the Holy Spirit. It becomes clear throughout the whole palace guard. Those who oppose you. Those who are trying to, to imprison you. And to everyone else, by the way. Yeah. See, we're in a time where you get to stand and have clarity about where you stand. Look, my feet may be planted right here, but in the Spirit I am drifting in the current of His Spirit. I am drifting where He's leading me. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. Yeah. Come on, church, this is a result of what it looks like to be in drift, be drifting in the current of a divine dimension. It's going to bring clarity to you. It's going to bring clarity to those who are against you. It's going to bring clarity to your brothers. It's going to bring clarity to everyone around you. See, drifting. And the current allows for the, those opposing you and everyone else to know that those difficulties, those circumstances, those, those adversities are for Christ. This is why we're doing this. Mm. See, it's not, he's saying because of my chains, not in spite of my chains. Man, most in the current have been encouraged. If you see another brother standing up rightly, just drifting with exactly yeah. what the Holy Spirit is saying, it's going to give you more courage. Say more courage. More courage. And it's going to give you less fear. Say less fear. Man, that is exactly what we need to walk in tonight. Let's look down a few verses into verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn. Say the word torn. Torn. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. See, we have a tension between moving on and staying put. You guys ever had that kind of tension before? Do I stay right here, Lord, or do I move on? Which one's your will? Because I see benefit in both. I see your will as potentially being both. See, currents of water create tension that as they begin to flow they're flowing through stiller less moving water and by flowing through that stiller less moving water that idle water it causes eddies you know those little swirling areas that you see these little spin-ups that it is is causing a stir in what is stagnant around it See, when you begin to move and drift in the current of God's will, you're going to stir up a few things around you. It's going to stir up and cause other people to be in a tension of what to choose. Do I stay where I'm at or do I move on to the current that you're, you're drifting in? Now, this can also be an inspiration for a brother or sister in, in the Lord. That 
is it God's will for me to stay at this job or do I move on to the next? Well, as pastors, we usually ask, why are you wanting to leave in the first place? Are you just looking to avoid the tension that's actually stirring the hearts of people that you're working with? Or is it truly God's will stirring you because there's more work to go do somewhere else? And that's kind of where he's caught. You know, both choices look like God's will, and he settled on what was best for their growth. Did you notice that? Because if he went on living in the body, this would be more fruitful labor for him. But what should he choose? He said, I don't know. I'd rather be with the Lord. But for your sake, I'm choosing to be here. Because we seek sort of a pattern that drifting in the current means that you will constantly encounter tension between your will and God's will. But what it's going to lead to is growth. That's what, it, what the heart of this was that Paul had for the people. That by drifting in the current of God's will, it led him and others to experience growth. Look at verse 25. It says this, convinced of this. Come on, what are you convinced of? See, when you really understand what God is saying to you, you can be convinced of something. I know that I will remain. <laughs> Paul's saying, yeah, you need me to be here. See, we're part of a brotherhood. It'll be better for you if I stay. I'd really like to go to be with the Lord. But I know what I need to do, and I'm convinced of it. See, I can be drenched in my identity. I can get up and I can walk in it right here because the Lord is speaking it to me. I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress. Come on, that's the same word that we read a few verses before. For your headway, for you to forge ahead, for you to advance and see the progress. Not only your progress, but what else does it say there? Enjoy in the faith. Come on, everybody just smile at me real quick. Come on. You got to have progress and you got to do it with joy. It's not enough to have growth, to have movement, but you got to do it with joy. You mean I can't look like this? No. No. No, you have to have joy. And look at the type of joy in the faith. Look at verse 26. So that through my being with you, again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow, will abound, will be superfluous, will be over the top. Why? Because of what Paul is doing. See, he's drifting and it's bringing other people. It's helping other people grow. It's helping them find joy. And not just a little bit of joy, but an overwhelming, Amen. overflowing, abundant Amen. joy. Come on, how's your day today? Did you have overwhelming, overflowing, abounding, abundant joy today? Because that's what we need to have. This is the time for us to demonstrate it. Get in the drift of the current of God's Spirit. Amen. Let the progress, as you're growing, wow, I've never been this way before. Yep, that's what growth looks like. <laughs> You've never been here before. I've never seen what's going on around me. Yep, that's what growth looks like. But that is what your progress is. That's how you forge ahead as you go, you know what? Man, I don't know how to drift like this. This is a new drifting for me. Ah, but I can feel that it's the current of God's spirit. Amen. I can feel, I can feel the strength that's trying to rise up in me. I'm not going to allow fear to be there. I'm going to be progressing and I'm going to do it with an overwhelming, overflowing joy. You know, in verse 25 here, let's read it again. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and will, I will continue with all of you for your progress. Say progress. progress. We have a second slide for progress that enumerates this a little bit more. Once again, same word, Procope, but it's another definition that we found for this uh, same Strong's number, 4297. This word seems to be originally nautical. Nautical to make headway or to forge ahead. This meant that this term, Procopos, meant to gain clarity and movement while flowing in the current. When we're looking at how, how do I get joy? Pastor, I, I'm really having a hard time being joyful about all these very legitimate circumstances that are really upsetting me, unfair, unjust, and I can't overcome them in my own strength. How do we get joy in something like that? Because I am certain that when I begin to drift in the current of God's will by His Spirit, it's going to lead me to the destination of actually growing up. 
that I'm going to make some headway in chipping off my character that doesn't belong. I'm going to chip away apathy. I'm going to chip away cowardice. I'm going to annihilate paralyzation and double-mindedness. That was pause for effect. Just want to let you know. I didn't, I didn't blank out. But how else can people begin to see your progress, see you making headway, see you forging ahead, if there's no obstacle there to begin to challenge your character and overcome it and get to that destination of just grow up? Obstacles are there to force us to grow up, and it takes drifting in the current through them to get to that destination of growing up. Everybody turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. Be diligent in these matters. Everybody can say amen to that, right? Amen. What are we saying amen to, though? Diligent to what? These matters, right? Like the specific gravity of it, being diligent to hydrogen's, you know, electron of just one in its, uh, in its uh, circle? No. What are these matters? Let's read the verse above it. How about that? Yes, let's discover this. Verse 13, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture. Devote yourself to what kind of reading? Public reading. Public. Okay, not the pandemic reading scripture. Okay. Public reading of scripture. To preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift which is given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders lay their hands on you. See, he's reminding them to be diligent in what they've already devoted themselves to. Holding to that standard and that being devoted to public reading of scripture. That would ensure that they would have the substance that they needed to drift in the current that would lead to the destination of actually maturing. Now look at verse 15. Be diligent in these matters. These matters of the public reading of scripture. Of being commanded to being taught to these things. That you get in the current of what God is doing. Give yourself wholly to them. The Nazbi says... To be absorbed in what's going on. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Come on. To be absorbed. Thank you, Nesby. To get into the current. Come on now. When you get, when you get, uh, anybody get fixated on something? You, you start thinking about it and uh, a pregnant mama starts getting fixated on what that room is going to look like. Uh, uh, when you start in this day and time, everybody's fixated on trying to find out the latest information. This is saying get in the current of what God is doing. Amen. The public reading of scripture. <laughs> The teaching, the preaching that we all need. Amen. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself completely to them. Be absorbed in them so that everyone may see your progress. Yeah. That means you got to be progressing. Yeah. That means when difficulties come, you got to do better today than you did a year ago. That means you've got to keep engaging with these. You know, I did it. I'm learning how to do something correctly. Okay, now I can do it correctly. And a pastor comes along and says, hey, man, man, I see your progress you know what to give you more progress? If you did it with a smile. That's something to smile about. Yeah. Come on. What you shouldn't do is go, oh, it's never good enough. You're like, hey, praise God, you're making progress. Now we're going to continue to make progress. We're going to continue to grow. We're going to give ourselves holy to this and go, thank you so much. It's like oil upon my head. Amen. Thank you, Lord, when you use circumstances or the men and women around me to help correct me. You know why? Because I get to see some progress now. I know where I need to make progress Amen. in. Watch your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, watch out. Watch out. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them. Praise God, if you had a good day today, we're so excited for you. Now persevere in that and do it again. Amen. Pastor, man, I prayed really good today. Like it was crazy. You don't know how much I prayed today. Amen. Do it again tomorrow. Persevere in it. I mean, I read my Bible with my kids tonight, Pastor. It was good. I put, tucked him in bed and I prayed over him. We even read a Bible story together. Amen. Persevere in that. Amen. Pastor, your wife, persevere in it. Follow your husband. Persevere in it. Because if you do, yeah, I got an amen there. Amen. 
Because if you do, you will save yourself, both yourself and your hearers. See, salvation is on the line by you growing and showing your progress. Yeah. You got to get in the current of what the Lord is doing. You've got to drift in the current tonight. Amen. Hey, can I just tell you this? Are, are you guys with us tonight? Yeah. Can I tell you that the journey is unpredictable? Do you know why we're calling it a drift? Because it doesn't look like you're even going in the right direction sometimes. It's chaos. And we're trying to get around a corner and we're turning the opposite direction and letting our speed. We're trying to keep our speed as high as possible. That's how drifting came about. We're going to add a brake, but keep the gas going to keep as fast as possible to move around something that we shouldn't be able to physically do right now. No, that's, that's our life. Your journey is going to be unpredictable. But the pattern of growth that you are following is predictable. See, see when you're drifting in the current, that is an unpredictable status. Yeah. How could anyone have predicted where, where we stand today as a country, as, as, a, as a society, uh, our locale? How, how could anyone have predicted that? It's unpredictable. But you know what we know? Do you know what I know tonight? Is that there is a predictable pattern that you can grow in this time. I mean, not just barely make it, not just kind of survive your way through it, but you can start to thrive as you Amen. drift in the current of what God is doing in your presence. Yeah. My gosh, what a good time for the church. I am so excited. I am so happy that we're here. I am ready, man. I've been talking about it. I'm like, man, I hope I can get arrested. <laughs> you know, we actually have a friend who posted something very bold on his uh, church about his church in Louisiana meeting, and he literally got to put on a terrorist alert. Be no, I'm, I'm using I'm using very specific words. He got put on a terrorist alert, and the state police came in and disbanded what he was doing. Come on, man! I wanted to get the I wanted to be the first one to get to do that. <laughs> We're ready for it. Yes. You know why? Because we have no fear. Because we're just going to drift wherever the Lord says to go. See, you get a sniffle. Don't worry about it. I'm serious. <laughs> I wish we could pause the tape for just a second, but I'm not going to. See, drifting in the current requires diligence. you got to get absorbed in this. Drifting in the current allows people to see your progress. Amen. Quit trying to fight the current. Man, if you've ever been to a swimming lesson, you know what they tell you if you're going to go out and get in the current? You don't swim against it. It will just wear you out. You will not win going against the current. Nope. But you sure can get going fast if you start swimming with it. If you, stir, if you start drifting with it, man, what happens in your life is you start to make actual, real life progress. Mm. See, there's an unpredictable journey, but there is a predictable pattern of growth that is right before us tonight. There is a predictable pattern of growth in our victory that is right before us. I mean, it is, it is right in front of us tonight. We've got to persevere. That's how we get to this, yeah. is we drift. We, we trust the Lord and go, He is the maker of heaven and earth. I do not have to be afraid about anything. There is nothing that can move us. We stand firm because we stand in Christ. Amen? Mm. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. You know what pastors establishing for us is that when we're drifting in the current that moving of God's spirit into his will it is going to be an unpredictable journey but the predictable pattern is always going to be growth in that imagery of swimming and particularly swimming to shore on a beach you can't swim against the current or you're going to drown. I don't know, maybe something like Saul, Saul, why do you kick against the goats? Why are you kicking against the current? But when he began to swim with the current, he found himself drifting in the current of God's will. And look at just the growth in his life over the course of time. 
How much have you been kicking against the current? Those times when God is trying to strongly move you in a certain direction, challenging your fears, challenging your insecurities and inadequacies, and just said, quit trying to control the direction of what you're doing with your own life. Quit trying to manage the outcome. Just trust. Trust that if you flow with or, or drift in my current, I'm going to make sure that you're mature. I'm going to make sure that you're complete. There will not be one thing that you lack at all. And that's usually what we're trying to preserve with our own strength by kicking against the current. 2 Thessalonians 1, 3. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing. Come on. Is growing. Amen. Not just is growing. It is growing more and more. <laughs> and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith, and in some of the trials... No, no. Three quarters of the persecutions and trials. Only the ones that are recommended. How many? All All the persecutions and trials you are enduring. Now, let's put this together somewhat like a, a mathematical formula. Their faith is growing more and more. Their love for everyone is increasing And this is happening in the midst of persecutions and trials. You're telling me, Pastor, that when I begin to just cut loose my anchors and my lifeboats and drift in the current of what God is trying to steer me in this way of life, of loving Him above all things, not loving my life even unto death, that I don't care a damn of what happens to me only for the name of Jesus that that will actually cause growth in my trust and ability for you to come through for me? That will actually increase my love for other people? I thought I could just read a few books and listen to some really cool songs and accomplish those two things. Because this when, when this one jam comes on, I mean, my faith just goes through the roof. When I see this one bumper sticker, it makes me want to love people more. No! When I am persecuted, when there are trials, what should be coming out of me is, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be drifting in your current because I know I'm headed towards a place of maturity. That you're working out of me what doesn't belong and what remains is only you, and that is going to be glorious. That I have the ability to share my, my, my love for you, my love for them, my trust in you, and also my trust in them. That my trust in everyone in this room, my love for everyone in this room, increases the more that I am pressed. It increases the more that I am shaken. It increases the more bad days that I begin to have because guess what? We begin to find commonality in the trust and the love that God has for us. All it takes is just that one word from a brother that says, Hey man, you're called to propel other people into his presence. Don't forget the identity in which God has given you. Drift in that current. It's going to lead to a place of maturity and growth. And I shake off all the despair and I go, yeah, I've been thinking stupidly. What am I doing? And that increases my love for my brother. Increases my need for his voice in my life. And likewise from me to you and you to me. When we begin to have an unpredictable journey. Set your heart, mind, and expectation that there is a predictable pattern of growth that's going to come about. Be full of joy. Let me say this again. Be full of joy because what follows the unpredictable journey is a predictable pattern of growth. Say, yes, yes, I get to grow up today. I get to mature. This is a clear Drifting in the current, that's going to lead me to being a grown-up one day, Pastor. (laughs) There's a children's story that helps gives us a very mature and grown-up kind of look. The idea of being thrown into the briar patch. Yeah. The story goes that, that, that this animal is saying, don't throw me in the briar patch, but they feel right at home. Please, no, 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 don't put me in difficulty. It's actually where I thrive. Don't, don't throw me in that. 
The world looks at it and goes, man, this cannot be the place that you want to be. Except that it is exactly where we want to be. We have the joy of the Lord as we're drifting in His Spirit. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, quickly. Ephesians 4. Verse 12. We normally start in 11, so we're going to start in 12. What are the fivefold part of the ministry supposed to be doing in us to prepare God's people for works of service? To get you ready so that the body of Christ may be built up. Somebody say built up. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Come on, that is the goal. This is the season that we're in. God is speaking to us. He's helping us so that we might become mature. That we might grow up. Yeah. That we might have growth and progress in our life. And advance in those things that you have yet to see advancement in. Yeah. That's what the Lord is promising us tonight. That you can advance, that you can grow beyond those things, that you can become more mature tonight, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. One of our 12 gates reminds us of that, doesn't it? To have the fullness of Christ. Look at verse 14. Then we will no longer be infants. Another way to say that is, then we will no longer be those who are immature, those who are not showing progress, those who are not taking the difficult things and working through them. We're going to get tossed back and forth by the waves. Isn't that exactly our society right now? Yeah. I mean, aren't you seeing people that are just absolutely freaking out? That means they're getting tossed back and forth and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful schemes. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things... Somebody say all things. All things. It doesn't say some things. It doesn't just say some parts of your life. It says in all things, we get to grow up into Him, Christ, who is the head. Christ Jesus. We in all things must be growing up. Are you growing just in some areas? But the Lord is trying to help us to grow in all things. He's trying to mature us in all things. Yeah. And you know what sometimes that requires? Difficult circumstances around us. But we get to show our progress and we get to do it with overwhelming, abounding, overflowing joy as we do it. Amen. Let's, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 45. Say growth whenever you get there. Because pastor, don't forget while they're turning, the journey may be unpredictable. But your pattern for growing up in all things, your pattern for growth... It's so predictable, and the Bible spells it out for it us is. again and again and again. It is. In Genesis 45, we're looking at Joseph. The young age, God gave him two dreams of what he would become. And can't you say there was a fairly unpredictable pattern of how he would get to the end of that journey? How he would become the mature Man of God, used to be the Savior for the whole world, Zaphonaphanir. And here he stands, revealing himself to his brothers. And let's see the maturity of exactly what grew inside of Joseph. Verse 4, Genesis 45. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. See, Joseph was able to be standing in this point because it was the result of him drifting. Drifting with the current of God's will that was a predictable pattern of becoming mature. A predictable pattern of growth in his own life. It resulted in not just his personal life, but it's now affecting his whole family. It's affecting them Right there in the now. And it's also going to lead to providing salvation for the entire world. For his nation Israel, but also for the known world in that whole region. He goes on to say in verse 5, And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves. I think many of us would have just stopped where verse 4 was. The one you sold into Egypt. Yeah, I'm that guy. You sold me out. Shame on you. <laughs> Not at all. His maturity begins to put God's will on right footing. 
Do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. (laughs) Come on. What a position of joy, love, and a demonstration of faith. It wasn't. It wasn't really you that sent me here. God sent me ahead of you. Though you were just a carnal, murderous group of beasts, that wanted to do nothing but disown and destroy me, that really wasn't you. Don't be upset with yourself. That was God. Sending me ahead of you to provide salvation, not just for me, not just for you, but for the entire world. We got to find that ability to draw from the well of joy in salvation whenever circumstances do not match the goal for which God is pointing us to. And you have to resolve that these circumstances are only just allow me to drift in the current. Because I know it's going to be a predictable pattern of growth in the future. Look at verse 6. It says this. For two years now there's been a famine in the land. And for the next five years there will not be plowing or reaping. <laughs> How many days are we in our current status? How about catching it after two years and knowing that there's five more years to go? And yet, what is Joseph doing? You're seeing him learn how to drift in the current of what God is saying, of what God led him. He's not even holding his brothers harmful. He's saying, I forgive you. Come on, this wasn't even your doing. No, it most definitely was their doing. But he's not for someone who understands the drift of the current. Yeah. He's like, see, you thought you were doing it, but it was God putting me right where I needed to be. Come on. But God sent me ahead of you. He says it again. There's time number two. To preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. (laughs) Church, they were he was two years in to a seven year pandemic. But God, somebody say, but God. But God. but God sent him ahead to drift on ahead of them to get into the place where he needed to be so they could find the solace that they needed. My goodness, what a good God we have to preserve a remnant. Salvation, both for yourself and your hearers, is what we learned in Timothy. Look at verse 8. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. This is the t- third time that he says it in four verses. I want you to understand That we don't have to worry about our circumstances. We can trust that it's God moving us. Is this God or is this the devil? I don't even care. I just trust that he's moving me. Whoever whoever was the origin of this, I trust that I'm in the right current. And he will put me where I need to go. I don't have to see it. I don't have to understand it. I just have to trust in him, show my progress, and keep a life full of joy while I'm doing it. He made me father to Pharaoh. Lord of his entire household. And the ruler of all Egypt. Church, can I remind you that your circumstances do not matter? But I don't under, But why? But stop even worrying your little heart about it. Stop worrying your little brain about. Uh, 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 don't even worry about it. Just trust that God is moving you in the current. You're drifting in the current of divine dimensions and you will grow. Yeah. Somebody say, I will grow. I will grow. When you stay in this current of the divine dimensions, you will grow. He's going to help you. He's going to enable. He's going to empower you. Your journey may be unpredictable, but it is a predictable pattern of growth that will occur as you do this exactly as the Lord has done it. It will allow you to have growth in your forgiveness. Anybody have a little, uh, little slow on the draw forgiving people? Well, i got some honest people at least. There was more of you, but... You'll grow in your honesty. You'll grow in your transparency. We'll, t- we'll take down the camera and come right up to your face here in just a second just to make sure we identify each person. You'll have growth in your perspective of what's going on in your world. You'll have growth in your joy. You'll have growth in your obedience to the Word. You'll have growth in every area, in all areas, in all things. You will grow up into Him. Yeah. See, the journey is unpredictable. Yeah, that's just part of it. That's what drifting is like. But your pattern of growth is as predictable and as faithful as the God who made the pattern. Amen? Amen. You know what we have is, uh, we have a list. We have a list of drifters in the Word. By drifter, I meant those who are 
are accustomed to drifting in the current and expecting the predictable pattern of growth. One of the first ones is Gideon. Gideon was a drifter. He was familiar with drifting in the current of an unpredictable journey. That one of going to war with just torches and jars. <laughs> Take a jar in one hand, torch in the other, put the jar above the torch. When we get there, you're going to take it off, crack the jar, and run to the camp. And I'm going to defeat all your army. Okay, that's great. Unpredictable journey, absolutely. But I'm trusting the character of God to lead me to a point of victory, a point of growth, a point of maturity, because it was leading him to a predictable pattern of growing into the mighty warrior that God had called him. You know, whenever he was cowering at the threshing floor, there was actually a wine press. And then God said, get up, mighty warrior. This was the opportunity for growth in Gideon. The opportunity for him to display what God was calling about. Think about the Apostle Peter drifting in the current of an unpredictable journey. He was caught in a trance. That's awkward. Caught in a trance. And what did, what did he learn? What was he seeing in the trance? He was learning about kosher food. <laughs> but he was also learning about the predictable pattern of growth as the Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles. See, what the Lord was doing there is Peter was able to drift exactly where the Lord was leading him in a way that is impacting and has impacted our people. And has impacted yeah. us even to this yeah. day. Hey, there's Joshua. He was drifting in the current of an unpredictable journey of leading a siege with only silence, <laughs> marching once a day and on the seventh day seven times. And finally sounding trumpets and shouting, which led them to the predictable pattern of growth in an all-out victory. See, we just commit to drift with the current of God's will. His power is always going to be there to give us deliverance when we need it. Think about Daniel. How Daniel was drifting in the current of an unpredictable journey into captivity. Had to worry about a heavenly diet. He got put in a lion's den. But he had the predictable pattern of growth. Of hearing ever more clearly from the heavens. Yeah. Prophecies that are still being unfolded over the course of time. See, he was drifting exactly where God put him and it allowed the growth for him to be a, a prophet for all times. Yeah. What an incredible growth. Hey, there's Elijah. Elisha. He drifted in the current of unpredictable journey of discipleship under the, the overseeing of Elijah. He found the predictable pattern of growth to exceed his mentor, his rabbi, and had his eyes constantly open to the armies of heaven fighting for him and then calling for the opening of the eyes of his servant as well. Yeah, we couldn't leave this part without talking about the drifting of Jonah. The literal drifting in the current with Jonah. Had an unpredictable journey, but that predictable pattern of growth that led to repentance and the salvation of an entire large city because of what he drifted in and learned from the Lord. Yeah. We can't leave out Father Abraham. Now, he's a father of the faithful. He was a man that was well acquainted with drifting in the current of unpredictable journeys. Hey, just leave early Chaldees. How about that? Let's start there. <laughs> Wander about everywhere they put your feet. That's where I'm going to give you the land. I'll show you what to do next. He was called from that land of his father to go into the land of the father. He learned to drift in the current of faith, trusting that he who promised was faithful and helped establish the predictable pattern of growth. Don't you see that throughout Abraham's time? From that, we should gain hope. We should gain joy. That there is a, a promise in Abraham to be the father of nations while he was yet still childless. This is the father of our faith, guys. This is the one who set the pattern for drifting in the current that knowingly leads into the predictable pattern of growth. That he stood firm on the promise that God would fulfill his promises for his life. And he was unmoved from it. That would result in being saved 
and his family many times from invading armies, even wicked cities. If you could turn to Genesis 18, and this is going to pick up in that midst of him drifting with the current while surrounded by wickedness. Genesis 18, 18 is where we're going to start. It says this, Abraham will surely become. You know why it has to tell him that right here? Because he does not yet have the son of promise. Abraham will surely become a great and a powerful nation. Come on, what does it look like to drift in the current of God's presence? To, d- to drift in the divine dimensions that God has for you. It looks like God will call you something that it doesn't yet look like you are, but you have to walk like you are. Amen. You have to allow for the growth for you to get there, the predictable pattern that you will grow to become exactly what God says. Abraham will surely become a great and a powerful nation. So much so that all the nations on the earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him. Somebody say chosen. Chosen. So that he will direct his children and his household after him. To keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. So that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. Who brings the promise about for Abraham? The Lord Lord does. But the Lord is doing it from a man who understands that he must drift in the current of what God is saying. He must continue to battle through things. And he's got to do it. And he's got to raise up his family alongside of him. Yeah. Man. That we might see our progress. And that we might see it in our families. That we might learn how to drift as an individual, yes, but you gotta move that so your whole family's drifting. Yeah. Come on, you gotta learn how to drift in that minivan. <laughs> yeah. That skill. It's one thing to drift in a sports car, but you gotta learn how to dr- you gotta learn how to drift in that minivan now. See, see, you gotta have your family along with you. Speaking of family along with me, I want my family to come up here. Cassidy. Hero girls, make your way up here as well. Got some drifters coming mm, on stage. You're gonna drift a little bit. Come on, minivan. You know what you see on stage here? What you see on stage here is a result of drifting in the current for over 20 years. A part of our testimony, my personal testimony that then carries over to my family, is that in 1993, I was filled with the Holy Ghost, the same church where pastor, same service, where Pastor Wade was playing the saxophone during worship. Imagine that. That's drifting in the current right there. The way I did it, it was a saxophone. You know, the time period that I was there, maybe about six weeks total, I was a young Baptist kid just hungry for the Holy Ghost and got filled. I never one time ran across Wade. It wasn't until years later we began to retell the stories and timings of our experiences that we realized we were in the same service when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't until about uh, two or three years later that we're all in the same church King's Harvest in Baton Rouge. And what God began to do is establish and intertwine a covenant partner relationship. Wade and I used to lead worship together at King's Harvest. Wade was out front. I was the, the, the guy just strumming along, adding some more vocals in the background. And we began to develop this relationship and cultivating it. But we had no idea of what the journey would look like. It was unpredictable of what would happen. That eventually led to us moving here to Sugarland in 2004. Wade and Christy come in here in 2014. Ten years apart. Well, Eric and I used to talk all the time. So we love Wade and Christy. We think that they are called to be here, but just kind of, I think in Texas. Yeah, that's, that's a very confined area of Texas. Well, it was yes to both that God did that in their life and eventually brought them here. You know, Wade, whenever I was ordained in Louisiana, 
he prophesied over me something that I have kept dear to my heart to this day. He said, what the Lord is calling you is the same thing that John cried out. May I decrease so that he may increase. And I remember that the moment that he prophesied it over me when I was ordained. And I can still go back to that moment with clarity. It's helped me drift in the current of what God did from that point leading all the way up to now. That we are an intertwined covenant uh, family that needs each other. See, this is, we're talking about learning how to drift as a family. See, we had a lot of things. Why did I, Lord, I didn't, not sure why I went to college and did the things that I did. I felt like I was in a drift. I just felt like I was trusting him for each step along the way. How did I end up as a teacher or a principal? I, it feels like a lifetime ago. But what the Lord was doing, he was saying, learn to trust me in the drift. See, and then he gave me this beautiful one. And then he gave me these beautiful ones. Handsome ones. <laughs> Dapper. See, what we're learning how to do is as in an individual, you start learning it. And then you put your family learning it. And then you start joining in covenant relationships with other families. See, a church is a family of families. See, I need you to do this right. You need me to do this right. We need each other. We surely need the P-Rows in our life. Isn't your life so much better because the P-Rows are a part of it? My gosh. See, in what you're seeing in your pastors and in our families, there are people full of joy, full of life, and full of confidence that you will continue to see us progress. You will continue to see us grow, even as the days get more and more and more fruitful in the days to come. Amen. Man, the Lord is so good. I'm enjoying drifting with this body. I have a couple of things that I'd like to say to Natalie. Would you come stand over here with me? Natalie, the Lord has been so good to us. He's brought us through many times of drifting and everything else. And I want you to know that the Lord dropped on me five things that I should be looking for in a wife um, before we started dating. The first one was that she's full of practical and godly wisdom from the word that builds up a house. She shows her faith by what she does, and she shows her love by her obedience. That's number two. She's a seeker of peace, and she craves for shalom. The fourth one is she always is listening to the Lord, having her mind set on having that instruction from the Lord. And the last one is she's like an olive tree, faithful to what's been given to her. See, the Lord showed me a vision three years ago now about an olive tree. And I think it's very fitting for the season that we're in. It was of a mountain, and there was an olive tree on top of it. And on that, on that mountain, there were storms and lightning and hail and craziness all around, much like what we're living in right now. And what the Lord spoke to me, because <laughs> he showed me that that olive tree never stopped producing fruit. And what the Lord said is, that is you and me. And so here today, in front of our fathers, in front of our family, and most importantly, in front of our Heavenly Father. Today, I want to invite you, because I need you. I can't live without you in my life. I can't accomplish the things that I need to accomplish in this life without you. Lord, show me that you are the perfect one for me. And so my song of joy, will you marry me?
This is, this is with the blessing of the two pastors that help lead this church. This is with the blessing of our elders and, and those that we live with. Uh, you want to talk about merging two families together. This is, uh, this is our shot at merging our two families together, and we're so happy to do it. We're going to ask that you pray with us, but we want you to, sh- we want you to see something. We want you to see two people who've never loved anyone else in their lives. They've never been interested in anyone else in their lives. That the Lord has purpose for them to be together. How in the world, at 19, at 18, when Matt and I are in the same services and don't know it, how can you predict this unpredictable journey? But what you can do is predict the pattern of growth that happens. That will be about if you follow what the Lord is saying. Would you guys stretch forth your hands? I'm going to ask the elders. I'm going to ask our friends to come forward and just lay hands on them. We're going to stop in the, we're going to, in the middle of this service. We're going to pray for them right now. Come on, let's pray for them. Mighty God, we thank you. We thank you for this predictable pattern of growth. Lord, through an unexpected journey. Lord, right now, we bless. We bless what you're doing in this couple. Lord, we pray that your power, that your mind, Lord, your spirit would help them continue drifting in the current knowing that it was going to lead to growth in them, growth in the kingdom. Lord, growth in your name being displayed through this couple. Lord, fill them with your power. Fill them with your mind. Fill them with your heart. Fill them with vision of what the future is to hold. Lord, give them dreams and give them visions. Lord, let your word grow rich inside of them. And let their sensitivity to the moving of your spirit increase as well. Lord, fit their hearts with courage and the the tenacity and determination to go after what you put before them. Mighty God, we love you and we thank you for the joining of these two lives, Lord, as they commit, Lord, to a time of absolute purity, to a time of listening to your word, Lord, of learning, Lord, of being discipled yet more as they get ready to have a life, Lord, that moves from two lives into one. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We are so ecstatically full of joy, God, that you have brought these two together. Lord, that this is your purposes designed in the heavens, Lord, and now made manifest here on the earth, Lord, now revealed here on the earth. God, we love you and we thank you, Lord, that that we can celebrate tonight with joyful hearts, Lord, commitments of love, Lord, that will produce a lifetime of fruit in your kingdom. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we thank you. We bless your Mighty and holy name, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So there are lots of tissues at the front if you need them. That's just for our families. (laughs) Everybody have a seat. Are you going to continue to drift in the current? Yeah, we got something for you too. Don't worry about that. See, that's them. Come on. Amen. Church, there is a predictable pattern of growth. If you just trust him. It's hard to tell it when they're small and walking around in diapers or 
with or without diapers, I guess. It just depends. Charlie, yes, sir, of course you can. Predictable pattern of growth. Joel and I had the privilege to be at this same stage when Matthew and Cassidy went through this same stage in their life. And this is very predictable growth. And, and just as these two have gone further in, in their walk and, and, and in their growth in the Lord than we have, these two are going to go further than them. Amen. So turn with us to Psalm 16. Because it's one thing to celebrate with joy. It's another thing to find out what you need to do. Psalm 16 and verse 5 says this. Lord. Somebody say, Lord. Lord. You have assigned me my portion and my cup. See, you don't have to worry about parents, who your kid's going to marry. You have to worry about staying in the drift of his current. Yeah. Before Gabriel was born, we were praying for him about these days that we're living right now. Before Natalie was born, Pastor Matt and Cassidy were praying about these days that we're living in right this moment. So you can trust that the Lord has assigned you a portion in the cup. He's assigned you a current that you get to drift in your entire life. You've made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in oh so pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. Verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. I don't know if you're noticing here, but your pastor's... Our families have decided that this was the night. In the midst of a global pandemic, we said, we are so confident in what the Lord is doing. Let's do it now. Let's not wait. The Lord has spoken. Let's move on it now. Right here, right now, because the Lord is with us and we feel him with us. Therefore, my heart is glad. My tongue rejoices. Look at verse 11. You have made known to me the path of life and filled me with joy. See, it's not just joy for those two. It should be that this is the joy that we can all walk in tonight. That we can all learn about drifting in the current of God's presence so that we can do this, that people can see our growth. Our journey may be unpredictable, but it is a predictable pattern of growth when we just trust in the Lord. We got to put a smile on our face. We got to have a resolve in our heart. We got to be willing to stand against the onslaught of the enemy. And do it with a smile. Because we are going to make it. We are going to let others see our progress in the kingdom. Turn to James chapter 1. We'll look at verse 2. Consider it. What kind of joy? Pure joy. Unmixed with anything else. My brothers, whenever you you face trials of many kinds. You know, before Natalie was born, Cass uh, was pregnant around the same time that Christy was with Gabe. And that the birth date of that child was only a couple of weeks away from the birth date of Gabe. We miscarried about 10 weeks into it. Devastated. And it caused us to search our hearts. And we begin to get caught up in the why. Why is this happening? Is, it this, is this the devil? Is this God punishing us? And God woke us up. He shook us. Shook us to a divine dimension that said, hey, you have to fight for it. This isn't my punishment. This isn't the devil robbing you from some secret back door. This is something that you have to stand up, begin to walk out, and fight for. It's your. 
I called you to be a couple. So guess what? I called you to be parents. Now fight for it. We gained our resolve. We got out of the sloth of self-pity. And we began to seek the Lord's face and persevere. The first month. The first month we set our face towards heaven, begin to pray and no longer cast any doubt of why this is happening. Cassidy was pregnant with Natalie. Now, at that point in time, is an unpredictable journey of the gender of all my children. <laughs> but I'm sure standing here today, Gabe, that you can be glad that my firstborn was a girl. <laughs> I got three more that are up for sale to the highest bidder. <laughs> that meaning the cost of your own life for Jesus. <laughs> so I'm able to stand here and I see a young couple that God has been orchestrating their path before they were ever born orchestrating it through their parents. And now standing here, I am able to consider it pure joy for every trial that I have ever had in having children. Amen. And I'm able to rejoice at the growth that it has produced now. But guess what? We're going to have grandkids, y'all. Uh, Lots of grandchildren. Wait, I, I would like to clarify that that is not the current status. No, 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 no. That is, that is yet to grow as we drift in this current. you got to put a ring on it, go through a ceremony, that whole deal. Yes. I just, I just thought I'd clarify. <laughs> Amen. Very good, Pastor. Very good. In, in many, 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 many more months from now, we will have grandchildren. Amen. Verse 3. Everybody pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the scripture. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. How long should perseverance last? As long as it takes. As long as it takes to do what? Finish its work. Verse 4 says perseverance must finish its work. It must get to that destination of growth. That's at the other end of the unpredictable journey. So that you may be mature and complete. Single guys, do you want to be mature and complete? Amen. Persevere in the name of Jesus. Amen. And practice good hygiene. <laughs> Not lacking anything. Not lacking anything. Single ladies. You persevere with joy, pure joy being on your faces, and it will ensure that you will not lack anything, including a godly man. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Help me with this, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. See, it's in a place of just being subject to what the current wind is blowing. But it's not staying in the current of God's divine will. See, as you're traversing through or drifting through the current of God's will, it's always going to lead somewhere. And where that somewhere is, is being mature and complete. You won't lack anything. What the Lord is really looking to do is to get us to actually get some joy. Get a joyful heart that says, I can trust this process because I'm going to grow up as a result of it. Every insecurity that I have is going to be crushed and there will be substance inside of me that subdues the insecurity that was once there. Who wants to overcome being insecure? If you're insecure about it, raise your hand. Just go ahead and raise your hand anyway. Come on, stand to your feet with us. Last scripture that we're going to read to you tonight is Hebrews 12. 
Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. See, what did we talk about on Sunday was being drenched in your identity. And what comes from that? You can get up from where you are and you could start walking in your purpose. You can start walking in that identity. What does Hebrews 12 teach us? That that walk, as you are faithful in it, as you learn how to drift in the current of the Holy Spirit, you know what happens? Is that walk becomes a run. Yeah. You start growing in strength. You start growing in ability. You start growing in your calling. And you begin to start to trot. Then you start to run. Then it's a full out sprint. And you're able to do this again and again. Let us run with perseverance the race that's marked out for us. Amen. How do you end on a night like tonight? We're telling you that your journey is going to be unpredictable. Yeah. We are not saying that the days ahead are going to get more and more normal. That ain't going to happen. Nope. I'm saying it's going to get more unpredictable. And you know what you can do? You can start smiling and saying, Amen. This is a chance for me to show that I'm making progress. No more me about me preaching something that I haven't had the opportunity to grow in and to live in. Now I get to live it. Yeah. I get to say that it doesn't matter what the world says. Well, here you are, church. You're here with us tonight, and the world is saying, you should not do this. And we're saying, but our God says that we must. There is no option for us. There's no thought about an ulterior plan. Why? Because we're learning how to run in this race that he has marked out for us, and we're going to do it with perseverance. Come on, we got to do it with perseverance. Yeah. we got to let people see our progress. we got to do it with a smile, with full, joyful engagement. And what the Lord is putting before us. Let's look at verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. The author and what else? Perfecter. You think whenever he's done with something, it's going to be perfect, right? That's what perfecter means. The perfecter of our faith. For the good attitude set before him. The positive thinking set before him. Who for thee? Set before him. Endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know where we're going tonight? We're going to a place of fixing our eyes on the author and perfecter, and we're going to resurrect some joy. We're going to find the joy of being in the drift of God's will, in that current, because I know it's going to only lead to us growing up. So as we begin to pray, cut loose some anchors. Let go of some lifeboats. Turn your heart towards heaven in repentance and begin to drift in the current of God's overwhelming joy filling your heart. If you have a hard time doing that, just begin with this simple phrase. Thank you, Jesus. If you're not even sure what to thank Him for, just begin to thank Him for being Him in your life. So right now with heads lifted up, hands raised, we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus! Lord, thank you for giving us a life that is worthy, worthy to give you glory, worthy of your name. Lord, thank you for giving us children. Lord, thank you for giving us arrows in the hands of a warrior. Thank you for raising up disciples. Thank you for giving us godly women that we can hand to godly men. We rejoice to you, mighty God, for being our King, our Lord, our Savior, our everything.